Hi everyone, Alex Diplo here from Expert Forex. It's Thursday the 26th of March and we have just completed our Thursday webinar and we've covered really some good trade setups, found some really good ones on the daily and on the four hour charts. We've looked at back testing alternatives, uh, we've looked at double your account in one trade concepts and we've also looked at the RSI trading technique in a little bit more detail and the USD and yen domination factors. So um, enjoy the recording of this webinar. I'll speak to you again when we have our next webinar next week. Okay, we might as well start. Welcome to everybody in the room. Thanks for your attendance. And also, as I always say, please send through your questions or comments or any areas that you'd like discussed. Uh, these webinars are a little bit tricky at the moment because uh, I'm not re recommending trading. So therefore, I don't go into uh, major detail on the charts. Uh, what I will do this morning, uh, I've got a few topics that we can chat about and some comments have already come in that um, uh, I can chat about. So uh, we'll do that and I'll go very much by the questions that you ask and comments that you make. Uh, and uh, I'll start with a, a, a really basic overview of, of the trading um, and then we'll go on to uh, t uh, chat about some other Forex trading topics, make it more of an interesting and uh, educational type of webinar. Okay, so now, um, uh, just to repeat a little bit of what uh, was happening yesterday, um, uh, on the charts I have the daily charts, and I've got a, a mixture of uh, daily uh, uh, currencies here. I've got the, the major uh, uh, currencies over here. Then I've got the currencies that are related to where the USD comes first, like the USD yen, USD franc, and USD CAD over here. Then I've got some rare, uh, uh, yen crosses, and then I've got a, a bit of a mixture of currencies over here. So I've got a, a mixture. These are the sort of 12 main currencies that I like trading. This column over here changes from time to time, depending on which currencies are doing well. Now, as, as per yesterday, uh, we were talking about uh, dollar dominance and dollar weakness dominance and it's still continuing you can see here are green, uh, uh, blue candles here for the euro going up blue candles which means either the euro's strengthening or the usd is weakening but because it's happening with all of the candles you can see there the, the blue candles up blue candles up blue candles up it's more likely that the usd is weakening and the same thing down here we've got a red candle going there red candle down there and a bit of a sideways movement on the yen and I, and the reason for that is that both the usd and the yen are weakening and therefore the usd yen is going sideways but relative to its other trading partners the usd is weakening and there you can actually see the the impact over there the um uh, uh, the, the yen is weakening and again you can see the impact where you've got a, uh, a blue candle with that cross, a blue candle with that cross and not such a big blue candle but yesterday there was quite a nice blue candle uh, for this particular cross. So those are the kind of things that I look at at a high level. I say what's dominating the market, the USD or the yen and, and uh, how are they dominating, are they weak or strong? So I, ha I have a look at those high level uh, areas. Um, I'm not going to go into the 360 degree indicator because that's for, for uh, let's say, sensitive trading. At the moment, sensitive trading is not what, what, what you do because the market is quite um, uh, volatile and unpredictable. So uh, we are using more rough signals. Now, when I say rough signals, I say uh, signals such as the um, RSI uh, 50 line crossover. Now, if you look on the screen here, you can actually see them in action. And I'm going to actually put a, a shape in there for the uh, for the um, yen uh, for the euro. Didn't quite catch that one. Okay, so we go like that. And we open it up, and and we 
pull it. Oh, I can't, I can't pull it down. But no, all right, I'll have to open another one. <laughs> uh, sometimes you can't pull these things down to the bottom. Okay, there you are. So, so what I'm talking about is when the uh, when the RSI goes over the fifty line, that is one of the key signals that you use in this kind of market where the market is just going all over the place. So that's that's a pretty good signal that's happening on the euro at, at the moment. It's a buy signal, it's going up. So uh, that is a good signal. And the other times when you use this signal is when you can't draw proper um, uh, RSI uh, violation lines um, or when the lines that you draw aren't really that good. Now, uh, it, for the CAD, for instance, here's a really nice signal. I'll now increase the size a bit just to give you, oops, bang the wrong way there. Okay, so give you a, a, an idea. Uh, that's quite a nice, the only problem with this particular signal is that the you need a leg that has gone oversold, but I'm cheating a bit, I'm using a leg that's not oversold. And there you can see the mounds, and you can also see a divergence. So this is actually a very good signal that's happening right there's the divergence uh if you take it from where that peak happened that peak happened on that candle so so that's the starting point of this divergence and uh you can see it's a massive divergence the indicator is going down and the and the um price is going up so this is a type of signal that i would traditionally uh, trade in an, a normal market and the actual signal was over here, was over there, uh, and it's now continuing. And it, it, not, it is now continuing, and that's why that green is there. It is now, um, uh, this green was uh, from the previous session. So we actually identified this as a trade in the previous session. So, so there was something that's worked out, and the Canadian is also one that's worked out. It's the same, oops, same one. This one I'm preferring. This one hasn't really worked out. It has partially worked out. It went over, went right down, and then came up again. So this is another example, exactly almost the same type of chart divergence. This one was better because it had an almost oversold environment. But this is what are we looking for? This is almost an ideal RSI trade setup. Two big waves, a trend line. That the only problem with this trend line, we want the trend line to, to happen uh, but, uh, closer to the 50 line. The cl closer it is to the 50 line, the more va valuable it is or more reliable it is. And then you have this divergence, which we again have there. So, so that's the kind of setup I'm looking for in my trading. And uh, I either trade right on the, on the, um, Cut over, which is over there. You can see it was really a good one, uh, or on the 50 line, which also was a good one, but it's now retracing. Okay, so um, let's have a look at. So, so, so those are the main signals. So, so the, the the euro's making it, and the pound. If you look at there, it's going over the 50, so it's starting to make. Um, it's starting to move into a bull market. They, that's moving into a bull market. The, the Oz is also doing the same thing. Um, the only only difference between the Oz and why I've got a cross there is if you look at the, the euro, it's gone overbought, it's gone oversold, overbought, and oversold. So that is a healthier signal. The Oz, however, has not gone overbought for a long time, which means there's a, a str strong trend in place. And that that uh, crossover uh, uh, should be avoided because it's not uh, moving from overbought to oversold. Uh, for instance, the pound you've got over overbought, oversold, or it starts at oversold, overbought, oversold, much more valid signal. So that's another thing that you need to look out when um, when trading this method. And again, here we go. Here's another another one, and you could just. Back to size. Um, here's another. So, so there are quite a few signals happening right now. Uh, they are worth following through on. Uh, these are are pretty uh, pretty good signals. Uh, sure that's, and I'll just add 
because it's good to have these shapes in place for the next webinar, which unfortunately will only be next week, so we'll see how these have panned out. Okay, so that was identified as a, as a signal uh, on the pound yen. You can see it, it's working very nicely. Um, that one wasn't because, again, it, was, it didn't go overboard. So although this is a really good signal, um, I've got a cross there and I'm saying, well, maybe it's, it's, it's not the greatest uh, signal that there is. Uh, the Euro Yen is, is, is also making a nice signal. Now, yeah, we got closer to the RSI uh, type of uh, signal we're looking for. We're looking, it's almost gone overboard. It's gone oversold, overboard, oversold. So you can draw, draw, and that, in fact, is a signal there. It's a little bit late. It sh should have been noted last night. And let's just see, that's the, the, that's the signal. So you'll also see that the RSI gives, is a leading indicator. So it, it actually gives you a, a breakout signal before it's obvious on the chart. You can see it, it wasn't obvious on the chart at that point. If you look, you draw a trend line down there, uh, it wasn't obvious at, the, at that particular point. But uh, it does... Um, it does give you uh, a, a, a before the time kind of notice. Um, as you can see, the pound yen, but the pound New Zealand is all over the show with very spiky candles. Sign to stay away there. Okay, so oh, there's another really nice signal happening right there. Uh, divergence uh, and now we have the 50 line crossover so again I'm going to mark that one so there's quite a few signals that's going on here um, and uh, we uh, just bear in mind this is these are the daily charts uh, but they are definitely a guide to really um, a change of uh, trend as it were all right so there's quite a lot happening um, I'll, I'll go down to the four hours just to give that a bit of a bit bit of a um, a look and then I'll, I'm going to address some of the questions that have come in uh, for uh, oh, there we are let's see what's happening there all right now on the four hour, you can see a lot of trend lines and that's exactly the way uh, you know to trade in this kind of market okay there's a nice a really nice signal happening right there uh, although there are divergences up there but uh, and it has gone oversold, overbought, and this, in fact, is a very good signal. Uh, again, it, it's happening before the the, the price chart is um, showing a, 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 a breakout, but on the RSI, it's actually showing the breakout there. And uh, what I'm going to do is also just as a reminder, the shapes are pretty handy. Uh, as a reminder, we're saying there's our sell signal. So, so this is on the four hour. Uh, so this is a definite, uh, you know, uh, tradable. Bearing in mind that we are going into the Asian session, we are actually in the almost dead section of the market where it's between the um, US and the Asian market. It's it's doldrums that I like calling it. Uh, but but that signal definitely comes out of the US market. Let's have a look if there's anything else that's coming out. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's. Uh, we're getting the same signal on the Aussie yen. They're very closely related. You can see the charts are very similar. There we are. Uh, this is this is a uh, the type of trend line that we're looking for. This is this is like a almost a model, except the divergence isn't that clear. Um, it's it's a semi divergence type of thing. That's it's like. Mm, not really a divergence, but it's it's flat at the top there, and at the same time the price has gone up. So you can so it's sort of it's a, it's a sort of a semi a semi divergence. But this is what we're looking for. We're looking for oversold. It would have been better if this had gone overbought. I would like that, but it's oversold, overbought. Uh, either the of these humps can be overbought, and that's an overbought. So and then you want two big humps. You want healthy humps, two big humps at least two so you can have three or four or five and then you have a trend line violation and this is this is just a classical uh, uh sell signal it's just it's a real classical uh sell signal here so let's have, see how these work out today now uh, uh, you know i've trade 
hundred, hundreds and hundreds of, of, of uh, techniques and I've settled with this as my main technique. And uh, when I say settled with it, I've been trading it for 10 years um, and I just find it the most reliable technique. Uh, but it does have to be traded in um, uh, sideways markets and that is why the test of, of uh, the RSI going overbought and oversold and overbought before you take the signal is an, an important one. Here's almost a signal here. Um, uh, you see it hasn't gone oversold, so it's almost a signal, but uh, certainly, uh, uh, you know, there's the, and, and here again, you can see it hasn't gone overbought, oversold. It's got, uh, uh, during a trend, the RSI will not reach the oversold environment. So there's the trend and the RSI just will not reach it. So that, that's a sort of <laughs> signal, uh, but uh, not, uh, I wouldn't trade that one. Fact, let's give it a, a, an X. Okay, so I think uh, we've we, uh, there's quite a bit happening uh, there today. There's a few signals that have come up. Um, I'm just going to see if there's anything else. Uh, these trend lines are are, are quite uh, important uh, for this type of trading because uh, sometimes I, I ignore the RSI completely and I just go by trend lines and and certainly that one has. Uh, uh, sort of generated a quite. I just want to remind myself again. I'm going to mark this with a shape um, th that the Canadian is starting to um, actually strengthen. And uh, when it's when the Canadian's going down, it's actually the Canadian strengthening, and uh, that's what's happening. Or the USD is weakening, which is what we've seen throughout. So, so that's why it's so important to have a, a feel of um, it's actually the USD that's weakening. That's why that one's going down. All right. I think that's, the, the, that's a bit of the analysis side of things. Uh, I've had uh, two questions coming in that, um, that, that we could look at. Uh, what is the best way to manually back, back test with MT4 strategy testing or external software? All right. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you there. I haven't got it loaded, but the... Uh, this, there's a software called uh, Forex Tester number three or number four, I think it is, um, is uh, extremely good. And I think what we'll, I'll do is I'll just go to the actual uh, um, website. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> Forex Tester, there we go. Boom. And... Uh, All right, let's see if this goes onto your screen. Yep, there we go. All right, the Forex tester, um, you can use uh, MT4. And before I, I, I go there, let, let's just use MT4 as, as a, an example. So what you would do with MT4 is uh, you disable the shift keys uh, there, and you just go back. You just go back to any old time in the past, and um, let's go back and you, you go back like that. Okay, so so uh, you would say, all right, now this is what's presented to me. What can I do now? There is a, a I think it's F7 or F9. I'm not sure which button it is. Uh, that will, no, it's not F9. Uh, if I, no, F7 is not that. F11, that's right. No, F11 doesn't work. All right, sorry about this. I'm not having done this for a while. F10. It's it's one of the buttons. F12. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah, found it. Okay, so F12. And let's just go back one. So so what you how you would back trade this is you say, all right, this is what's presented to me. What will I do? And let's just take an example here. You would say, all right, oh, there's a trend line, boom, boom, RSI trend line. It hasn't violated yet, but it's likely, this is likely to buy. And the reason for that is there's, uh, there's flatness there and there is a, a divergence. So you've got a divergence here, you've got an RSI, and we say, all right, I think this is gonna buy. Uh, it, it hasn't violated yet, so it's not a buy signal yet. So let, let's just wait. And, and let, So if you press F12, it goes one candle further. Then you say, okay, now I'm gonna buy. 
So you record your buy and you go boom, boom, boom. Okay, there, there's an example of a successful trade. So that, that's one way of, of uh, then you've also got to make, uh, you also got to decide, you know, how you're going to exit the deal and all those kind of things. But I'm just showing you the, the concept of using um, uh, MT4 as a manual back trader. And and uh, you just use that F12 button. The F12 button will allow you to um, uh, uh, forward the chart one one candle at a time. So this looks like a really good buy signal that's happened, but it's already you can see it's starting to hook back. So maybe now is the time to get out. And you then press F12 and you say F12. What are, Oh, there we are. Okay, so now it's now it's turning back. Now it's turning into a sell signal. So that so that's how you back trade using MT4. Now, what is it? What are the downsides? The downsides here is that you can't see what's happening on the daily chart. You can't see what's happening on the hourly chart. You can't. You know, you 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 you're trading in one dimension. That's what I call it. Um, so so that's the biggest disadvantage. Whereas. And let's just uh, let's just go back to where we with this one, and um, it's fine. So, so, so the the way the, that you should trade, uh, and we'll take that same currency that I was using there, the yen, I think it was, and the way you should trade is uh, using multiple uh, time frames. So, so, so yeah, I've got the weekly, the daily, the four hour and the hourly charts and you can start seeing how, let's say uh, the four hour is your main trading chart, which in my case it, it, it is. And uh, so I want to make decisions based on the four hour chart, but I want to use the one hour to really f refine my, my entry and I want to see what it looks like on the daily uh, in terms of support and resistance and th those kind of things. So it's always good to have three. And then I'll, I also like the uh, multiple moving averages, which are now consolidating, which uh, see, it shows you a sign of um, indecision. People don't know what's going on with the yen, and that's why it's uh, consolidating into a triangle up there. And But it is hitting a... Uh, that, that's I wouldn't call that a, a I, I wouldn't call yeah you could call that a, 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 a channel it could be at the top of the channel line so uh, a cell looks like a potential there and certainly if it if it does um, you know if it does cross something like that or, or it's, it's, it's a lot clearer you see it's a lot clearer on the pound on the uh, one hour so that so uh, certainly you know we in for a quite a pinch with the uh, yen it is uh, trading into a, a very narrowing um, triangle there so if it breaks out there it will move quite a bit uh, but the uh, the breakout looks like it's, it'll go south because that's saying south that's not giving direction um, and the uh, uh, the only uh, clue that it might go south is the RSI is showing that kind of divergence. So, um, so, so, so this is more of what you'd like to back trade. Now, uh, Forex Tester allows you to set the charts up exactly like that. You can actually set the, this up exactly on Forex Tester. And therefore, it's more of a live situation. Also, on Forex Tester, you can set up an account and you can actually trade that account as if you're trading live. So you would go, oh, I want to enter a deal. You'd, go, you'd actually go and click on the, on the order deal. You'd enter the deal. You'd put your stop, your target. So it's, it's really what, what I would call simulated uh, um, uh, trading. Uh, and... Uh, let's see if I give you any examples. No, they don't give you any examples. This is quite a, 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 a um, but um, uh, so, so that's what I like about Forex Tester. And and the beauty is you can do it over a weekend. You sit there or in the evenings or whenever it's quiet, and you can sit and you can actually trade. 
um, a few um, days of trading in an hour or so, because you've got you've got control over the, the uh, speed at which you, uh, the charts are played. So, um, Eric, uh, uh, how does that sound? Is is that more or less the information that you wanted? Um, I would go for the forex tester. It takes a while to learn how to set the charts up, but it. The forex says it tries to look like MT4 or MT5. So that's the big advantage. It's as if you're trading MT4, but it's you can simulate live trading a lot better and use multiple time frames and that type of thing. Whereas the MT4 one is still good, but it's one dimensional. All right, so let's have a look there. And oh, Eric, you sent in another question. Thanks very much for these questions because, uh, quite honestly, uh, you know, these uh, webinars are um, because we're not trading um, so aggressively, uh, they are more geared towards uh, trading technique discussion and that type of thing. All right, so let's have a look. So, what you say, you're learning the, the Dublin a day strategy as a beginner. Um, and uh, you're also looking at the ADX and the RSI and, and, and all that type of thing. So uh, let me just tell you something about the uh, uh, double in a day technique. The double in a day technique is, if you look at the EA itself, it is a top-up EA. In other words, you enter a deal and you have to decide when you want to enter the deal. So it's, so it's not a... a continuously traded EA. It's a tool that a, a, a manual trader uses. Manual trader spots a deal that could make, let's say, run 100 pips, and they want to double their account. So what they would do is they spot the deal, they'd see the entry, and they then engage the EA. And the EA, uh, and then they'd create a strategy that will double their account in three trades. So um, in, in three, with three top-ups. So uh, they'd enter, and the and the idea is that the EA will then take over the emotional side of the trade, and uh, and it will uh, it will go on and it hit the first top up, and when it hits the first top up, it then uh, brings the stop to a break even level. So you are totally risk free after you hit the first top up, it tops it up, tops it up, tops it up, and then it hits the target and you've doubled your account. And especially if you used 5% in the beginning, it will go to 100%. You know, that's a kind of strategy that you could design. So, so now I'm going to be very honest with you. The double a day concept is a marketing concept. It's it's exciting. It's it's a, a, a if I told you oh oh yeah is a top up uh, uh, EA uh, you'd say you'd yawn ah oh, top up oh, uh, maybe I'll try it or not. But if I say hey here's an EA that that you can double your account in one trade, suddenly your eyes go up and you excited and all that. So it's a marketing concept. The double a day EA is a top up EA, and and, and the intention is is that you start very small. So you start with a 30 pip transaction. You only put one top up in and you only risk 1% to maybe make 2%. So you start, the idea is to start small and trade normally. And then as your skills improve, you go, you risk uh, more and you have more top ups and you have longer, longer trends and, the, and therefore, and then slowly over a long time, you build up to a 5% to a 100% return. Now, the problem is a lot of people that, and we actually encourage that in the training, but a lot of people just jump into this and they go for the most difficult thing, which is the risking 5% to make out. It's very difficult. It's extremely difficult to, 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 to do that. Um, uh, the market has changed. It, it's become less volatile. We used to record up to 15 double in a day trades in the market in a week. Now, if we, tra if we record two, uh, we are very happy. So, so uh, just to give you a, bit of a background. So use the double and day trading technique for small trades, 30 per trades, 50 per, and only do one top up and build your skills that way. And as you get better, you can go for bigger trends and more top ups. I hope that answers your question about the double and a day technique. Now I did uh, last week. In fact, I, I doubled my account using three trades. So you, you, 
you go for a 26% target for the first trade, you then go for 26% of what, what your account size is then, and then you go for 26% of, of what your account size is then. And by then, if you have three winners in a row, um, um, then you've doubled your account. Now, that is a much easier and better trading technique because this is the other side of the doubling day technique. Your stops are tiny. If uh, Using that example of the 5% to um, 100% example, your stop on a 100 per, 100 per trend is 18 pips. Now, that's very small. Bearing in mind that your, your um, spread might be four, 4. So instead of 18 pips now, you have a four, 14 pips uh, stop it's very tiny much too small for a big deal of a hundred pips but if you're using the double in three technique you can have a hundred pip stop uh, that's the beauty of that technique is is you can ha you can trade normally you can have big stops and big targets or you, you don't even need big targets you can have 60 pip targets or, or 40 pip targets as long as you're making 20 26 percent of your account on that particular deal so so there's the two things you can do uh, with the double a day i think you must start small and build up build your skill level up uh, or try the double uh, the double in three technique uh, but again both of those techniques need an element of good manual trading success and the, how do you how you get there is you just trade and trade and you build up a trade record where you're slowly increasing the success rate of your trading and you are uh, becoming more and more profitable because you're getting the risk return ratios sorted out. And bo books can tell you the principles of doing those things, but you have to do that yourself for your own personal um, track record. So, um, yeah, I hope that gives you some idea on uh, the Dublin rate strategy. Let's have a look. I, I won't discuss the ADX. The ADX is most probably a good one to discuss in one of the next uh, webinars because the ADX is used in the make money technique. And I'll, I can explain that technique uh, in a little bit more detail in, the, in one of the next webinars. I think we're starting to run out of time here. Um, so uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, I, I think I'm, I'll end this webinar. If there, if there are any questions, comments, remarks, please send them. Now's a good time to send them through. Um, if, if I can answer them quickly, I'll do it right now. If not, I'll keep them for a future webinar. You can also always email me with any questions that you might have. Okay, then uh, thanks, thanks very much for your attendance. Thanks so much for everybody. Um, I see, I've seen some uh, really uh, 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 well-known uh, faces in the webinar and names. I mean, and uh, thanks, thanks for your attendance. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll chat again next week. From me, Alex Deploy, cheerio.